Praise be to God. Yes, Lord. It's been a it's been a while since I preached. I feel like it's my first time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. God bless y'all this morning. I'm happy to see every one of you. I've entitled today's message. Where's your keys? Where's your keys? As I began to seek the Lord on this message, I kept getting keys dropped in my spirit. Keys, keys. So I began to study the scriptures. The Bible is full of different references about keys. And over the two weeks that I was studying, God just kept confirming that this is what I want you to speak about. I want you to speak about the keys of the kingdom. And over the, the two weeks, I, I, I kept getting it. I was, I was looking at my key ring. And I began to realize that I have keys on my ring that I don't know what door they unlock. Good morning, Pastor. I have keys on my ring that I don't know what door they go to, what doors they lock and what doors they don't, and what doors they unlock. And then I began to clean out my dresser drawer and I saw I had a bunch of keys that were under clothes that I didn't even, I forgot were there. Now how many people have had key troubles? Probably everybody here. Everybody here at some point in time in your life, you've had key troubles. You've either forgot your keys, you've locked them inside your car, you've locked them inside your house, you broke them off in the lock. Somewhere along the line, everybody here has had key troubles. And I realize that the same thing that happens to us in the physical happens to us in the spiritual. That there are people who have keys that they don't know what doors they unlock. That God has given us keys, not key, but keys to the kingdom of God. Things that open the kingdom of God to us and there's Christians that don't even know what they do. Mm -hmm. There's Christians that don't know what doors they unlock and they don't know what doors they lock. They don't even know that they have authority to lock and unlock these doors. And there are Christians who should be walking with these keys, unlocking and locking doors, not only for themselves but for others. But where are their keys? They're lost. They're hanging up somewhere. Mm -hmm. They're hidden. They're collecting dust. And God said this morning, where is your keys? Where are the keys that I've given you? Are you using the keys I've given you these things? Are you locking and unlocking doors? Are you seeing that the captives are set free? Are you doing the work of the kingdom? Are you binding the enemy in your life? Are you loosening the blessings in your life? Where's your keys? Where's your keys? So today I'm going to show you a bunch of different keys in the scriptures, but our main text is going to be out of Matthew 16, 13. I preached this so many times, but I missed it. But I pray this morning that you would see it, you would see what God showed me. Matthew 16, 13. It's when Jesus asked his disciples, he said, Who do men say the Son of Man is? He was asking them, what do people say about me? What are their opinions? And they say, well, some say you're Elijah. Good morning, Tracy. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. He said, okay. But what do you say? Who do you say I am? Peter looked at him. Peter said, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. He said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonas, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. He said, And I say, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and the gates of hell will not prevail. He said, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus asked Peter, Who do you say I am? Peter said, You're the Christ. 
He said, this one revealed to you about flesh and blood. Your pastor didn't tell you about me. Your friends didn't tell you about me. God told you about me. Mm -hmm. God is the one who revealed you, revealed me to you. See, Peter had a revelation right from the Father. There are so many people who will tell you, yeah, Jesus is Lord, yeah, Jesus is the Christ, yeah, He's the Messiah, and their lives are a wreck. Their lives are a mess. They're living like the devil. And that's because they didn't have a revelation from God of who Jesus was. They only heard it from a friend. They only heard it from a man's mouth. But Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. You had a revelation from the Father. And you know how you can tell when somebody had a revelation from God of who Jesus is? Because it changes them forever. Yeah. Amen. There's no way that God can reveal his son to you and it not change you. Mm -hmm. It'll mark you. It'll change you forever. He told Peter, he said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. So let's look at this first key. The first key to the kingdom of God is the key of revelation. This key shuts hell hey, Augie. and it opens heaven in your life. You see, there were two revelations given to Peter that day, not one. And it's upon these two revelations that he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. When these two things are revealed to you, that's when hell can't stand against you. That's when hell has no authority over you. That's it's right. two revelations. You see, God revealed Jesus to Peter. God showed Peter, yes, this is my son. But God also showed Peter who he was. He said, yeah, your name is Simon. That's the name your father gave you. But I say you're Peter. You see... I know what man said about you, but this is what I say about you. Come on. And when you know, when you know who Jesus is and you know who you are and you know who he's called you to be, the gates of hell can't stop you. Mm -hmm, that's good. He said, yeah, I know. Your name is Simon, the son of Jonas. I know that's what your father called you. I know that. Man has put many titles on you, and man has put many labels on Come you, on and man Cameron. calls you many things, but all that matters is what I say about you. Yeah, that's right. Because once you know what God says about you, hell can't stand against you. Mm -hmm. That is a key to the kingdom. But I'm going to tell you something about this key. It's not good enough for you to hear it. If I give you a key and you stick in the lock, it's not going to do any good. you got to turn it. You know what turns this key? Faith. Not only when you hear who you are in Christ, but when you believe it. It's good. That turns the key, that opens the kingdom in your life. You have to believe what he says about you. You have to believe that you're anointed. You have to believe that you've been called. You have to believe that you've been set free. That is what turns the keys. It's faith. See, he revealed to Peter who he saw him as. He was showing Peter, Peter, listen, men say a lot of things about me. They're all wrong. They're just opinions, Peter. And men say a lot of things about you, but they're not true. Men might say you're nothing but a fisherman. Men might say you're unschooled, you're unlearned, you're no good. But what do I say about you? Mm -hmm. Who do I say you are? I say you're Peter. That name means rock. I see you as a rock. Men might say you're a screw up. Men might say you're a mess up. They still say it about Peter. But what matters is what God said about Peter. Hey, Miss Betsy. That is one of the keys of the kingdom. It's a revelation of who he is and who you are. And the reason why hell can't stand against you is because hell has two great lies, two great tactics, two great schemes. One, hell lies to men about who Jesus is. And the second hell lies to man about who they are. There's so many lies about Jesus. Hell will tell man that Jesus was just a good man. Hell will tell man that Jesus was just a prophet. That he was just a religious leader. That he was a nice guy. Where did he get all this stuff from if it's not from hell? Hell lies to man about who Jesus is. And then hell lies to men about who they are. Mm -hmm. 
Look what evolution does. Evolution lies to us and it tells us that we're something else than what God says we are. Evolution tells man that you're not created. You're not made in the image of God. You're an accident. There's no purpose for your life. You being here is just a coincidence. And there's no future for you when you die. Nothing happens. There's no heaven. There's no hell. Hell would want you to believe that. Hell would want you to believe that you were, that you weren't created. But God says otherwise. God says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Hmm. God said, I created you. I put you together. Now let me tell you something. When God creates something, he creates it with a purpose. Yes. Everybody here has a purpose. I can't tell you what that is. But God can. I can't sit here and tell you who you are in Christ. Remember, Jesus said, this wasn't revealed to you by flesh and blood. I've told so many people about who Jesus is. And I've told so many people of who God calls them to be. And it did no good. You know why? Because they only heard it from me. They didn't hear it from God. That's good. That's real good. Everybody here needs to be like Peter. You need to get close enough to Jesus to where you can hear his voice. Hell doesn't want you to do that because if you hear the voice of God, and if you hear God tell you, I am the Christ, I am your Savior, I am your Creator, I am your Maker, I am your Friend, I am your Lord. and you hear God say, you are my child, you have been chosen, you are anointed, you are called, you are sent, you are adopted, you are a son, you are accepted, hell won't stop you. That's right. Come on. But the problem is, is all Christians are hearing it from their pastors. They're only hearing about who Jesus is from man. They're only hearing about who they are from man. You need to get along with God. You need to open the scriptures and you need to ask God, God, who are you? I want to hear it from you. Yes. And God, who am I? Who have you called me to be? What is the anointing that's on my life? What have you created me to be? Amen. That's good, brother. If you hear these two things straight from the mouth of God, I'm telling you right now, hell will be shut in your life. It will lock the gates of hell in your life. You need to hear from God. These two revelations are two keys of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. I'm way ahead here. Whew. See, the word of God the word of God will tell you the truth and only the truth. Hey, Jamie. The word of God will tell you who you were before Christ. And the word of God will tell you who you would be without Christ. But the word of God also tells you who you are in Christ and who you are with Christ. But the crazy thing is, is that so many people believe half that. If you're a Christian, that's because you believe what the Word of God said about you before the cross. You believe that you were lost. There's no other way that you would have been saved unless you believed that. You believe that you were without hope. You believe that you need to be saved. You believe that your sin was so bad that Jesus had to go to the cross and suffer and die for you. You believe all of that. But what you have a hard time believing is what the Bible says about you after the cross. You have a hard time. Hell doesn't want you to know who you are now. Hell doesn't mind that you knew you were lost. Hell doesn't even mind that you got saved. Hell doesn't want you walking in what God's called you to walk in. That's good. Hell doesn't want you to know who you called to be. Hell doesn't want you to know who you are now. You have a hard time believing that you've been anointed. Many of you doubt that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of you doubt that you're even saved. Where are these lies coming from if it's not the pits of hell? Jesus. Satan doesn't care that you got saved. Satan doesn't care that you don't miss a Bible study. Satan doesn't care that you go to church. What Satan doesn't want you is to believe who you are. He doesn't want you to believe that you are the church. He doesn't want you to walk in the authority and the anointing that God has called you. The voice of 
voice of Satan mocks you. And he tells you, you're not who God says you are. You can't cast out demons. You can't heal the sick. Don't make a fool of yourself. You're not who God calls you to be. Yeah, you were lost. Yeah, you need to be saved. That's fine. You're saved. Just go to church. But I don't want you to be the church. I don't want you to rise up and take your place. Mm, that's true. Imagine if every born-again believer would begin to walk in what they've called to walk in. Imagine if everybody here under the sound of my voice would not just attend church, but they would be the church. Mm -hmm. Right now we have one building in Metairie. And these doors are unlocked for an hour, maybe two hours on a Sunday. But imagine if each person that goes here would be the church. If everywhere you go, it'd be like walking church buildings. Always open. Everywhere you go, it's like somebody has just entered into the church building because when they encounter you, they can encounter God. When they encounter you, they can hear the gospel. When they encounter you, they can be set free. They don't have to wait till Sunday. When they encounter you, you are the church. It's like they walked into the building. When they encounter you, they can be delivered. They can be healed. You don't have to bring them to your pastor. You have an anointing on your life. Walk in it. Believe it. You are the church. If you would believe that, if you would, if you would turn that key with faith, this building wouldn't be able to, to house. This building wouldn't be able to put enough people in it. We wouldn't be able to have enough services because you would be reaching everybody. We wouldn't be limited to an hour or two on a Sunday morning. The gospel would be going every day at all times out of your lips. buildings to contain the people that you would reach if you walked into who God's called you to walk in. That's the key that Satan doesn't want you to find. It's the key of your identity. It's who you are. Man's opinion about you don't matter. Your opinion about you doesn't matter. What matters is what God says about you. Mm -hmm. Find those keys First and apply them with faith. Every born-again believer has been given a charge. Every born-again believer has been given keys. The Bible says that every one of us has the ministry of reconciliation. You know what that means? God has given you keys and said, here's your ministry. Where I have placed you, where I have put you, I chose the place you'd be born, and I chose the time you'd be born. I set up a ministry right where you are. You are my church. And I've given you keys. Where are they? How many people attended your services this week? How many people did you have at your altar calls this week? You are the church. It's so easy to come into a building and judge a building and say, well, why is this like this? Well, where are the people? Well, where are the salvations? And you can judge a building, you can judge this ministry, but are you judging your own ministry? Mm -hmm. How many people did you get set free in your ministry this week? How many people got Amen. healed at your altar this week? That's what it means that you are the church. This is just a building where the church meets. It's up to you to set the captives free. It's up to you to share the gospel. God has given you these keys. Where are they? want to tell you that this church will not be filled by my preaching. Whether it's good or bad, I've been to churches, listen, I'm telling you, I've been to churches where the pastor couldn't preach his way out of a box. Hmm. And it was packed. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, what in the world? It was because everybody that attended that place was the church. Whether this building is filled or not, it's not up to my preaching or Pastor Carl's preaching. It's up to you. We're not going to win the loss by our great gatherings. We're not going to win the loss because we have such great food at our Thanksgiving feast. I've tried it. It doesn't work. We're not going to fill this building because we have great outreaches and great park 
uh, fun times. They're not going to come to the Lord because we have such great kickball fun. They're going to come to Christ when you rise up and take your stand and walk in the authority that God has given you. Where's your keys? Hmm. It's time for you to rise up and believe what Jesus says about you. It's time for you to walk in the authority of the kingdom and open your mouth. Open your mouth. Every time you open your mouth, it's like opening the doors to this ministry. People can come in and get saved. Which leads me to the second key. The second key is the gospel and the scriptures. The Lord told Peter, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. That was the authority to preach the gospel. On the day of Pentecost, Peter opened his mouth and he preached the word of the Lord. And 3,000 people got saved. Peter opened up the doors of the kingdom. Now, there was probably more than 3,000 people there. Not everybody came in. And not everybody's going to come in when you open the doors. But just do your part. Open the door. Give them a chance to get healed. Give them a chance to get saved. They can't get healed and saved if your mouth stays shut. Philip opened the doors to the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8. And the Samaritans came into the kingdom. And Peter opened up the kingdom in Acts chapter 10 to the Gentiles by preaching the gospel. And they got saved. When you preach the gospel, you open the kingdom. The doors were open to the kingdom to the Jews, the Samaritans, and the Gentiles because these men of God believed who they were and they opened the door by preaching the gospel. How many doors have you opened this week? They can't get stay, saved if your mouth stays shut. The scriptures of the Bible are a key to someone's prison. People around you are in bondage and they need a word from God. That's why it's so important that each and every one of us knows the Word of God, studies to show ourselves approved. You need to know it. Why? Because somebody's going to come to you with a door of bondage, a door of addiction, a door of depression. And guess what? You should have the key. You should know the Scriptures, and you should be able to tell them what the Lord says. You should be able to put that key in that lock and open it. The Scriptures will unlock someone's prison. That's why it's so important that you know them. The Scriptures are not just something nice that you put on your walls in your house. They're a key to someone's prison. Where are your keys? Someone has to use the scriptures. Will it be you? God has entrusted you with these keys. You've been given the keys to the kingdom. That means that it's up to you whether or not people are going to come in and get saved. The Bible says, how can someone, how can someone get saved unless they hear? And how can they hear unless someone preaches it to them? It's up to you whether or not the doors of your family and friends are open. Not me. You have your circle. I have mine. But it's up to you to open the doors of everybody around you. It's not my job. It's not Pastor Carl's job. Isaiah 22 verse 22 God tells a man by the name of Eliakim he says I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom the same keys that Jesus gave to Peter the same keys that he gives to us but he told Eliakim he said I'm putting these keys on your shoulder that means that I'm giving you a responsibility these keys don't go in your pocket these keys don't go in your drawer at home this key is meant for you to carry everywhere you go. These keys are meant for you to, 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 to bear. These keys are a responsibility. You know what keys represent? Keys represent authority. If I give you the keys to a building, that means I've given you authority here. Keys represent access. It means that if I give you keys here, you have access here. You can go in and out, and you can let other people in and out. God's saying, I'm giving you the keys, but they're not to go in your pocket. 
They're not for you to pull every once in a while. They're for you to bear on your, on your shoulders. It's a responsibility. And God has given it to you, not to angels, but he's given it to hey, you. God is saying it's up to you whether or not people are going to get saved or not. It's up to you. You have to open your mouth. Where? Where are your keys? Come on, preach. Like I said, if if your mouth stays shut, so does the kingdom of God in people's life. But do you know what else shuts the door of the kingdom on people? Matthew 23, 13. Jesus said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves don't enter in, nor will you let those enter who are trying. And in verse 3, Matthew 23, verse 3, he shows what he means by hypocrites. He says, do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Do you know what he says shuts the kingdom of God in people's faces? Hypocritical Christians. Good morning, Miss Belinda. Those who claim Christianity but live like the world. You know how many times I have and maybe you have encountered somebody that'll tell you, man, I don't want nothing to do with that Jesus. I don't want to do it, nothing to do with Christianity. My dad was a Christian and he was an alcoholic. My dad was a Christian and he used to beat us. I don't want nothing to do with that. I got a friend who's a Christian and he cheats on his wife. When people encounter a hypocrite, somebody who wears, who, who flies the flag, but they're not who they say they are, it shuts the doors. People don't want to hear it. They say, man, I've encountered that before, man, and it shuts the kingdom of God in people. Mm -hmm. Hypocritical Christians will shut the door in people's faces. People will tell you all the time, man, I used to go to the church, man, those people were such hypocrites. Man, they don't want them to do with Jesus. Why? Because they've encountered a hypocrite. And the door has been shut on them. That's why it's so important to be who you say you are. That's right. Yes, Lord. Jesus said he'd rather you be the hot or cold. He said if you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of his mouth. Do you know why he said that? Because lukewarm people, those who are in the middle, those who, yeah, I'll claim Jesus, but yet... I'll still get drunk on the weekends. Or yeah, I'll claim Jesus, but I still curse. Or yeah, I'll claim Jesus, but I still do this. The lukewarm Christians, those fence riders, they do more harm to the kingdom than good. Jesus said, I'd rather you be an atheist. I'd rather you not claim me. I'd rather you not bear my name than be in the middle. Because when you're in the middle, you're shutting the kingdom of God on people. Atheists don't shut the doors. Lukewarm Christians do. Yes. He's saying either get in or get out. Amen. Yeah, that's hard. But that's his words. That's not mine. He said, if you're in the middle, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth because you are damaging the kingdom of God. You are shutting the doors of the kingdom right in people's faces. Be who you say you are. Now let's get back to our main text. In verse 19, Matthew 16, 19, Jesus is telling Peter, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. Look what he says. This is the last key. There's so many keys we can hit on. Don't have enough time. But this is the last key I'm going to show you. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus said these keys have the authority to bind and to loosen, to lock and unlock. What is it that these keys bind? You gotta search the scriptures. Mark 3, 27. Jesus said, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. And then he will plunder his house. Jesus said, These keys give you authority to bind the devil. To shut the doors on the devil. This key, I'm going to show you what it is. This key gives you the right to shut the doors of hell and open the doors of heaven. This key gives you the authority to shut hell up in your life. All the voices, all the noise. 
all the bondage, it gives you the authority to shut those doors. And it gives you the right to open the doors of the blessings, the doors of favor. Yeah, Lord, Jesus. The doors of your calling. Thank you, Lord. What is this key? Luke 11, verse 20. Talking about the same thing, about binding the strong man. Jesus said, but if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor which he entrusted and divides all his spoils. Jesus says the finger of God that binds a strong man. It's the finger of God. That's yeah. his last key. Do you know what the finger of God is? Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit is the last key. The Holy Spirit gives you authority over sin and temptation. The Holy Spirit gives you the right to say no to, the, to your old life. The Holy Spirit gives you the right to say no to the devil and say yes to God. The Holy Spirit gives you the authority. You can't do it on your own. You need the key. You need the Holy Spirit. Many of you don't know this, but you need to stop shaking your prison doors. Stop trying to open the doors in your own strength and ability. You've been given keys. You've been given authority. The Holy Spirit is your key. Put it in your lock. Put it in your bondage. Put it in your addictions. And guess what? The door will be open because one stronger than an addiction is there. One stronger than a strong man is there. One stronger than your bondage is there. That's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of the living God. Where are your keys? Spirit empowers you to bind the enemy and shut the doors of hell and release the blessings. Release the favor. To take back to everything that Satan has stole from you, your peace, your joy, your happiness, your family, your friends, your kids. You can plunder his house. You can take back everything he stole from you. But you need the key. See, hell only has right to our lives when you give it a key. You know what gives hell a key to your life? Sin. When you sin, you come in agreement with hell. You give hell rights to your life. Don't ask me why am I dealing with all of this stuff and you've been living in sin all week. You open that door. Hell is not just going to bust in your life. You have to give it a key. Every time you, every time you come in agreement with sin, you're giving hell a key. Repenting and turning from sin by the power of God's Holy Spirit shuts the door of hell. See, you can shut the doors of hell in your life and open the doors of heaven, but I want to tell you this, you cannot have both. You can't walk under an open heaven and live in an open hell. You can't have it both ways. So many young people, they don't realize this. I watch them come in and they think that because they hear the message that I preach, they think that they because they come to church, that they're living in the kingdom, that they're going to receive the blessings, that they're going to receive the favor. They want to know, why am I not saved? Why am I not blessed like you are? Why do I have favor like you? Why do I have the favor that the Bible tells me to? It's because they failed to bind the strong man. God has given you keys. That means that you have authority. You can shut the doors of addiction. You can shut the doors of sin and open the doors of blessing, but you can't have both. God will not bless your sin. Never. God will not bless your sin. If you're living a sinful life, if you're in a sinful relationship, if you're, if you're doing sinful things, God is not going to put his hand on it and bless it. God will not bless your mess. Those things first you have to bind. He said, Whatever you bind with bound in heaven, whatever you lose first, repentance, then the blessings, first the binding, then the freedom. Mm -hmm. The reason why you're not walking in freedom is because you haven't bound the strong man yet in your life. Why not? You have authority, there's no excuse. The world has an excuse, they don't have somebody stronger than what they're dealing with, but you do. You can bind the enemy, you have been given authority. 
have the Holy Spirit. Where's your keys? The thing is, is that once you bind the strong man by using the key of the Holy Spirit, then you can help others get free too. Once you get free, then you can help others get free. That same Holy Spirit that you use to set you free can be used to set others around you free. Every time you see a person struggling with depression and hopelessness and addiction and anxiety and fear, that's an attack from Satan. Those things don't come from God. But these doors can be shut and the doors of heaven can be open. I remember years back at a Bible study, my sister Lola, she came in and she was, she was bound. Hell was open in her life. Come on, I'm Hell was wreaking havoc. Hell was telling her all kinds of things in her ear. She was struggling with suicidal thoughts. That's her testimony. And she encountered a 27-year-old man of God. I wasn't a pastor. I didn't have a title. I was simply a man who loved God, who had a revelation of who Jesus was, and I had a revelation of who I was, and I walked in the calling and the anointing and the authority that God had placed in my life. I was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't look at her and tell her, you're going to have to wait till Sunday. This was a Monday. I didn't tell her, you have to wait till Sunday. I hope the enemy doesn't kill you by then. I didn't tell her, yeah, I'm going to have to call my pastor up because, you know, yeah, I have to bring you to the church. I was the church. And I used the keys of the kingdom. And that day she got set free. Hell was shut in her life. That day, that moment heaven was opened. She walks in the blessings of God. She walks in the favor of God. She is a beautiful woman of God who has an anointing in her life like I've never seen before. And it's because a man of God was there with a key that he wasn't afraid to use. Where are your keys? Where are those stories? Where are those testimonies? Why aren't you using the keys of the kingdom? I am a Christian. I don't just play one on Sunday. I have authority. You have authority. You have authority over demons. You have authority to cast them out in Jesus' name. You have authority to heal the sick. You can raise the dead. You're a Christian. The word Christ means the anointed one. You're a Christian, that means you're the anointed one. You're anointed by God. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You're not a religious person. You're anointed. You're a Christian. It's time to start living like one. It's time to start acting like one. Pastor Tony Evans, I was listening to him, and he was, he was telling a story. He said, a, he said a young man and a young woman, they had just gotten married. They were on their way to the honeymoon. And God bless you, baby. They were on their way to their honeymoon. And he said that on the way there, they encountered some fog. And the fog was so dense. It was so, it was so hard. That they came up on a car in their lane and they decided they were going to pass it. When they passed it, they didn't realize there was an oncoming car coming their way. No, baby, you're totally fine. Aww. And they hit that car. And the car got mangled. And when they came to, the man looked over at his wife. And he realized that she was bleeding. That she was dying. That she was in worse shape than he was. And he thought to himself, I have got to get my wife help now. But he was in the middle of nowhere. And then he looked up. And he saw up on the hillside, there was a, a small little place. And it, and it had a 
It had a, a sign out front that said, Office of Dr. Bill Jones. He said, man, if I can get my wife to that place right there. So he carried his wife, and he comes all the way to the door, and he knocks on the door. And the man comes, and he says, he says, sir, he says, my wife is bleeding. She's dying. I need you to help her. And the man said, son, I'm really sorry. I don't practice anymore. The man looked at him, and he said, man, you got two options. He said, you either help my wife, or you take down your sign. You either help my wife or you stop claiming to be something you're not. Because I don't want to come here and see a sign that says you're a doctor, but when I meet you, I find out you're not what you say you are. And that's what's happening to so many people. They're coming to you. God is bringing people your way. People with bondage, people with addiction, people who are dying. And when they get to you, you're supposed to be a Christian, but when they find out you're something you're not, either be who you say you are or take down your sign. Hmm. Either walk in the anointing and the authority that you claim to have or stop waving the flag altogether. She said you're either hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. I'm closing. If you're here this morning and you say, you know what? I need a revelation. I need God to reveal himself to me and I need God to show me who I am. I need God to show me who he created me to be because he didn't create you for nothing. that's you to just raise your hand and I'm going to send somebody here to come pray with you. Somebody to come pray that God would just reveal himself to you. That God would reveal who you are and who you, what your calling is upon your life. If you're here and you say, you know what? I'm battling. I'm battling with fear. I'm battling with addiction. I'm battling with anxiety. I'm battling with depression. Then raise your hand. And again, somebody here will come and pray with you. Somebody filled with the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that will set you free. We will pray with you. You don't have to wait. You can get set free right now. If you're here and you say, you know what? All my life things were spoken over me. I heard so many words from so many different people about me. So many people said that I was no good. My own parents maybe told me I was no good. Maybe so many words were spoken over you and you say, you know what? I need to get set free from the words that were spoken to me. Well, maybe there were words that weren't spoken to you. Maybe there were words that you wish you heard. And you never did. Words of affirmation. But you never heard them. And you want to get set free from all the things that man has said about you. All the labels that man has put on you. You can get set free of that today. That's where insecurity comes from. Insecurity comes from all the words that were spoken over you in your lifetime. They have an impact. But you can get set free of that today. I'm here to tell you, you're not what man has said about you. You are everything that God says about you. And until you get set free of the labels that man has put on you, you'll never walk in the calling that God has called you. And if you're here and you say, you know what? I want to begin to use the keys of the gospel. I want to begin to share the gospel to my friends. Share the gospel those around me. I want to open the kingdom of God in their life. I'm tired of just telling people to come to church. I'm ready to stand up and be the church. I'm ready to walk in the anointing. And you need boldness. And raise your hand and somebody will come pray with you that God will give you the boldness to open your mouth. And if 
you're here and you say, you know what, there's people around me that are lost. And I want to pray for today. There's friends of mine, there's family of mine, there's co-workers of mine that are lost, that are bound by the strong man that don't know Jesus, and I want to pray for them. Hey, Jason. We can be with you for them also today. If that's you, just step out of your car. If you need prayer for anything this morning, then step out of your car and somebody will meet you right where you are and pray with you. Praise the Lord. As you go about your week, you go about your life, I pray every time that you pull out your keys and unlock your home, you pull out your keys and start your car, I pray that you think about the keys of the kingdom. Every time that you use your keys, you need to ask yourself, how am I handling the keys of the kingdom? Am I putting them down every chance I get? Am I losing these keys every other day or am I using them to open up heaven for others? Am I using them so that other people can enter in the way I did because somebody used those keys for you? That's the only way you got saved is because somebody was willing to share the gospel with you. Every time you, you use those keys, you need to ask yourself, am I using my heavenly keys? Amen. Amen. Amen, church. God bless y'all. Good preaching, I love brother. y'all. Y'all want to get out and fellowship with each other. If y'all want to come in the church where it's a little cooler, I don't think I don't know if we put it on the air, but we can get it off, y'all. Mm-hmm.